Let's think about the blood supply to and from the kidney. There's a very intricate arrangement of arterial and venous vessels within the kidney, forming really quite a beautiful, intricate and somewhat complex vasculature. But if we think about it in simple terms, it's got some fairly basic components. So let's think first of all about a kidney. So here we have a kidney. Let's say that's the, the right kidney. And we have the structure of the kidney around there and the hilum, which is the entrance where things get into and out of the kidney. And you probably know that the renal parenchyma consists of the renal cortex and the renal medullary pyramids. So here we have a medullary pyramid with a base and an apex. You've maybe got eight, nine, ten of these in your kidneys. We'll just draw a few today to keep it simple. So these are the renal medullary pyramids. Round about the outside is the renal cortex. The renal capsule will be outside of that, of course. And these are the cortical columns projecting down between the individual renal pyramids. Now, here we have the aorta carrying blood down from the left ventricle. So as you know, the aorta originates in the left ventricle, arches round, you have the thoracic aorta, goes through the diaphragm into the abdominal aorta. And here we have the abdominal aorta. There's a branch going to the left kidney. That will be the left renal artery. And here we have a branch going to the kidney we're thinking about now, going to the right kidney. And of course the aorta carries on further down to supply the lower half of the body. So we have a renal artery entering through the hilum of the kidney. Now the kidney is essentially hollow in a sense because it contains the renal sinus. So here we have the renal sinus. And the renal sinus is this hollowed out area in the middle of the kidney. And it's through the renal sinus that the arteries pass and the veins pass, carrying blood in the opposite direction. And also there's lymphatic vessels and nervous vessels in the renal sinus. And of course the calyces and the renal pelvis are also located in this area. And any spare space in there is filled up with protective adipose tissue. Now, the renal artery divides into segmental arteries. So here we have some segmental arteries carrying blood off to segments of the kidney. And then the segmental artery will divide and smaller arteries will carry the blood through the individual renal columns, the cortical columns. And these are the interlobar arteries. So one lobe of a kidney would be like one section, like this. That would be one lobe. That would be another lobe. So a lobe is one renal pyramid and the cortex above that renal pyramid. So these are interlobar arteries carrying blood up that way. Now, the interlobar arteries go up the renal column and then they bend sideways and they go along like this. And these arteries that go along the bases are called the arcuate arteries. The arcuate, because they kind of arc over the top of one of the bases like this. 
the arcuate arteries. It actually derives from a word which means bow, as in bow and arrow. They arc, they are arcuate. So we have the interlobar arteries turning into the arcuate arteries. Now, from the arcuate arteries, numerous smaller arteries are going to branch up the way, like this. It's going to be the same from all the arcuate arteries. So there's going to be small arterial vessels branch off the arcuate arteries. And these are called the interlobular arteries. So this was the interlobar artery, and these are interlobular arteries, obviously much smaller. Now from the interlobular arteries, numerous individual arterioles branch off, and these are the afferent arterioles. So the afferent arterioles are branching off the interlobular arteries. And of course the afferent arterioles take blood into the individual renal corpuscles. You might have half a million individual renal corpuscles. You might have a million and a half. Some people even have two million or slightly more. The average is about one million per kidney. And these are supplied with blood by the individual afferent arterioles the afferent arterioles. Now, the afferent arterioles pass into the glomerulus, the glomeruli of the kidney, and from the glomerulus, the blood drains into efferent arterioles. And the efferent arterioles themselves break up into smaller capillaries, and the capillaries in the cortex surrounding the upper part of the renal tubules, we can't see it here because they're microscopic, these are the peritubular capillaries. So there are peritubular capillaries. And in the medulla, the efferent arterioles break up and branch into the vasta recta blood supply and blood drainage system. So the vasta recta are going to, we'll draw the venous system on the lower medullary pyramid so we don't get too cluttered up. So the vasta recta are going to be coming up here. And they're going to form larger venous vessels like this. So these are the vas director capillary systems and small venules leaving the renal medullary pyramids. And the situation is similar at the, in the cortex. Here the peritubular capillaries drain into interlobular veins. So the peritubular capillaries, their venous blood is going to go into these interlobular veins. So we see here that blood is coming back up from the medulla and back down from the cortex. And in the same way there are arcuate arteries over the bases of the pyramid, in the same way there are arcuate veins. So these all drain into arcuate veins. That one's a little misshapen, but I think you get the idea. The arcuate vein arching around the base of the medullary pyramid. And in the same way, this bends around the corner and the blood goes back in a vein here. The 
interloba vein. And there'd be another interloba vein coming from this one as well. And then the interloba veins are going to go back into the renal sinus and they're going to join together into segmental veins. Now it's interesting, a lot of anatomy books don't mention segmental veins, but they have to exist to get the blood from the interloba veins back into the larger renal vein. So here we have the segmental veins draining blood back into the larger single renal vein. And of course the renal veins drain blood back directly into the inferior vena cava. So here we have the inferior vena cava and as you know that's towards the right side of the body, the aorta is on the left. There's another branch here going to the other, the other vein, the other renal vein which would be under there, going to the other kidney. So we see that the blood is entering via the aorta, going through the renal artery. From the renal artery it's going up the renal columns in the interloba artery, into the acute artery. From the acute it's going into the interlobular artery, into the afferent arterioles, through the glomerulus, into the efferent arterioles, into the peritubular and vastus rector capillaries. From here the vastus rector are draining up, the interlobular veins are draining down, taking the blood back into the acute vein, taking blood back to the segmental vein, back to the renal vein where it's going to start its journey back to the right atrium. So the blood supply through the kidney. And it's interesting to note that even though the kidneys are only 0.5% of body mass, 20 to 25% of cardiac output is going to the kidneys. They are remarkably vascular organs. And this is very important if they're traumatised because there can be torrential haemorrhage as a result of renal trauma because it's a very vascular organ. But in health, lots of arterial blood needs to go through it because of course the kidney is filtering this blood, removing impurities, homeostatically regulating the constituents of the blood and returning it to the venous system.